Lots of YouTube videos on China are not very well researched and they're often based on cliches about evil communists. One Dime's recent video on the Cultural Revolution is not one of them. In this video I'll talk about what I think One Dime gets absolutely right and one really important thing that he missed out. The video is called China's Cultural Revolution The Full Story. It's an hour long video essay. It's very engaging to watch. It's got lots of historical footage and there's lots of very cool animation in there as well. Outside of YouTube, One Dime is starting to get published in some radical journals. His video is based on a chapter in this edited volume, Underground Theory. The chapter is called Totalitarianism or Anarchism. And yes, I have read it, it's very interesting. The point that One Dime is really making in his video is that it's very easy to write off the Cultural Revolution as a period of anarchic madness where a bunch of ideologically crazed teens followed the commands of a megalomaniac totalitarian dictator. But this doesn't really tell us very much about what was really going on. One Dime does a really good job of making clear that the Cultural Revolution was a really awful time but he also manages to take it very seriously and highlight some of the complexities within it. And that's not an easy task to pull off. So he deserves a lot of credit for that. So what does he get absolutely right? Well, first of all, he frames his video as a counter to this very oversimplistic narrative of the Cultural Revolution that we very often hear, that it came about as a result of Mao's individual Machiavellian personality. Many mainstream interpretations of the Cultural Revolution like to rationalize Mao's encouragement of rebellion against his own party as some sort of cunning ploy to galvanize the masses against his own political enemies, just so that he could come back to power and establish his own absolute authority. One Dime is spot on about this. It's the account of the Cultural Revolution that we very often hear, that it came about due to an internal power struggle within the party. And this whole framing centers on Mao as a non narcissistic individual bent on gaining as much power as possible for himself. Now Mao may very well have been narcissistic but this airbrushes out of the account the socialist goals that Mao was trying to achieve, the social issues in China at the time that he was trying to combat and also why so many people in China got on board with the Cultural Revolution. In other words why so many people took it so seriously. All of these are issues which One Dime is trying to foreground in the video. Second, Mao may have been very very powerful but as one dime makes very clear he certainly wasn't in full control of what his followers the Red Guards were doing at the time. The video does a very good job of explaining how other leaders within the Communist Party, particularly Liu Shaoqi, were also organizing Red Guard groups with very different agendas to rival the more grassroots Red Guards which Mao had been mobilizing himself. He'd been mobilizing them to attack the bureaucratic structures of the Communist Party itself. Now here's where things get really complicated. Initially, skeptical party officials such as Liu Shaoxi were reluctant to stop the Cultural Revolution but wanted to contain it before it spiraled into anything dangerous. And more importantly, they wanted to prevent the rebellion from threatening their own power. So they sent out what were officially called work teams to lead the Cultural Revolution, but whose real aim was to contain the mass activity that Mao was trying to encourage. But they veiled their intentions in revolutionary political language so it wasn't immediately obvious. What One Dime is making clear here is that the Red Guards organized by the work teams were working directly against what Mao was trying to achieve. So in a sense what I've been calling elsewhere on this channel a struggle between a radical vision of communism and a modernist vision of communism. This same struggle was going on within the Cultural Revolution between different factions of Red Guards. So again, this wasn't Mao in charge of absolutely everything that was going on. In this sense, there was a power struggle going on here, but it was a power struggle between different visions of communism and how to achieve it. It can't be reducible to just uh, individual power politics. Following on from this, it is important to highlight that while this was called the Cultural Revolution, and it certainly did involve attacks on cultural elements considered capitalist or bourgeois. These attacks on culture were part of a 
broader strategy to attack the bureaucratic structures of the Communist Party itself. Because Mao and his supporters were concerned that the Communist Party had started to move away from the original socialist goals of the Chinese Revolution. In fact, Mao was concerned that the party was starting to become too much like the Soviet Union, which he considered had a state bureaucracy which was overly authoritarian, overly technocratic, and domineering, even to the point of being imperialist. So as far as he was concerned, the Soviet Union wasn't really socialist at all. And this brings me to the final point that I want to raise that I think one dime does a very good job of highlighting. But it's also one of the things that I think is most difficult for us to get our heads around. And that is that to the extent that this was a movement based on mass mobilization and mass participation in politics, this movement was highly democratic. While this might be quite the pill to swallow, the Cultural Revolution was actually when freedom of speech and freedom of the press was most widespread in Chinese history. One Dime is absolutely right about this, and it's a point that several scholars have made. In fact, Giovanni Sartori, Italian political scientist who was a specialist in democracy, he said that if we take the standard of democracy as simply participation, then actually the most democratic time in history ever was the Chinese Cultural Revolution. Doesn't mean it was a good thing, but it certainly wasn't totalitarian, and it does raise some very serious questions for us about what we mean by democracy. One Dime's point here is not to say that the Cultural Revolution should be defended, but he is saying that we need to understand what it really was, how it came about, how come it had so much support, and if we write it off as a, an individualist power grab, we're not really going to be able to learn the lessons from it that we could do. And finally, while I do think this is a great video, there is an important thing that I think One Dime really misses out. He does call it the full story, so I do think this is worth highlighting. And that is he doesn't talk at all, from what I can see, about the international context, which I think is really important. Partly because the international context that China was in at the time, in the mid-60s, when the Cultural Revolution kicked off, really helps us to understand the conditions out of which it emerged. In other words, the Vietnam War was relevant to why the Cultural Revolution happened. I think these issues are important to talk about because very often when we try to understand China, we tend to cordon it off from the rest of the world without looking at the international context, when in fact, what's going on in China is very often at least in part a reaction to what's going on internationally or in one way or another interrelated to the broader international context. So by dividing China off from the West of the world, we can't really understand what's going on. In fact, the mid 60s were a time when Mao and many people inside the Communist Party had genuine concerns that the United States and or the Soviet Union were gearing up to invade. This was a time of national emergency. I won't go into too many details here because I do have another video on this. I'll put the link below in the description if you want to take a look at it. Thank you for watching.